to be or not to be. Welcome back to another episode of the Sinestral Core. It's your boy Blacksby, aka Jason. State him. And today I have with me the real B movie. And my salt do be burning. And we will hopefully be joined <laughs> later on by uh the homie Graham and possibly David. AZ can't make it tonight. He's got obligations and allegations, but he will be returning. Allegations. Um, Whoa. Allegations of being a great man. Allegations, yeah, being a hardworking individual. Of being exactly. real. Real, real. We are absolutely uh, buzzing, buzzing to discuss Shut the 2024 Oscar out. nominations. Boo. Uh, it's salt, boo. Salt burn. We're, we're buzzing to discuss the 2024 nominations for the Oscars, Saltburn, plus our review of The Beekeeper, now playing in theaters. Uh, let's get right to it. Let's fly right into this. So, What are we talking about first? The Beekeeper. We're talking about The Beekeeper and how just cinema bro y'all don't know the knowers who cinema. know the knowers who know <laughs> know they be knowing real, and those that don't know they not be knowing they do not be knowing the uninitiated uh, nice, nice. <laughs> let's start Thoughts, from the top thoughts. this movie I think... this movie was um it's what it's what it was marketed to be. It's what it was what I expected it Shut to be. Shut up with the fucking puns. Shut up, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was on purpose. That was not oh, on purpose. Okay. That was... <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. No, it's he's it's just good... naturally like that. I'm just I'm too him. good. Jason, stay to him. Him Jones. Um, <laughs> you know, no, I think what, I think I think I think that's a good point, man. I think you know, it's it's like when I when I walked out of this movie or while I was watching it, you know, and I've said this before, and I will say it again. You know, movies specifically or particularly exist kind of on the spectrum, right? There's like mo- there's like movies as art, mm-hmm. right? Movies as like an artistic piece of expression, kind of an movies extension of the filmmaker, art. right? And then there's movies as entertainment, and then there's everything in between on a sliding scale of spectrum, right? And I think it's so important to be able to take things for what they are, right? Like you, like mm-hmm. and, and and I think. The beekeeper, and I think our, you and me specifically, our reactions to this movie are indicative of that. Like, was it? Is it the greatest piece of of cinematic art ever put on screen? Absolutely yes. not. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't see what that says, Gerardo. You make it out. What does it well, say? I'll describe it to you. Ew. <laughs> on one end is ass. And on one end is good. John Wick's on the good <laughs> side. The beekeeper's on the ass side. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I was going to say, is the good piece of movie. cinema ever put on film? No. But, like, it's a fucking Jason Statham action movie where he just fucks people just fucks. up. And we, yeah, we just fucks. I would. No, fuck. we just fucks people up. And and like, if you take it for what it is, it works, and you know what you're getting, and it's a good time. And who gives a shit? And I fucked with it. I thought it was awesome. I had a lot of fun, and that was all I was expecting from the Beekeeper. See, exactly. I agree 100 percent because I knew what I was getting into. Jason Statham has not been in any non-action movie since God knows when. His last like ten films are all the, <laughs> they're almost all the same film, <laughs> just replaced. Well, just to them his, himself, he himself has said, "I'm not an actor. Like I was just a random guy who they picked off the street who was good at martial arts, and I'm lucky to be here." He said, "I'm not gonna fucking try to win an Oscar." He said, "That's not what I do. That's not what I'm good at." He He's said, "I'm so lucky just that. to." He said, "I'm lucky just to be here." So I'm, you know, so and I know what I'm good at, and that's fighting shit. And he says, "So I'm a fight shit," you know, and. And if people like it and I get paid for it, then so be it, you know. And I think, and I think it's that that level of self awareness that makes me like him. And 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 it's and this movie I feel has that same level of self awareness about it. Like it knows what it is. It's not trying to be anything else. It's dog shit, and it knows it, and it's leaning into it, and it leans it. into. It's proud of it, yeah, and it leans into it's a it's like that guy that you know that who's a fucking dirt bag, and he knows he's a dirt bag, and he's not gonna change, right? But he's happy and content being a fucking dirt bag. It's the same thing, you know. This movie knows what it is, and 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 it, it refuses to change, and it's a good time, man. It was fun. I don't care. I'm sorry, it was fun. 
to tag on to what you said, you said uh, Jason Statham said he's just an action star, just a guy who can fight. That's one of the first things I put on my review. I put Jason Statham, this movie is Jason Statham reminding us that he is an action star. That this is his hands. bread and butter. Yeah, this basically mm-hmm. like he's, every movie he's in, it's not even any plot. It's just, hey, I got hands. I can whoop everyone's ass. I don't care. I fight everybody in, right right now. That's all his... That's literally... There's no character what development. His it's just, I'll, is. Beat, I'll beat the shit out of anybody in this room right now. That's his character. Every movie. Look, and, <laughs> and I will be I will be 10,000% genuine when I say this. I think if David Ayer had not directed this film, it would have been a lot worse than what mm-hmm. it is. I think it is good because I think David Ayer is a good filmmaker. Was the, was Suicide Squad dog shit? Yes. yes. But David Ayer can direct the motherfucking movie. Fury's, Fury's there. Fury's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. End of Watch is amazing. Is he a fucking cop apologist? Yeah. Yeah. Right kind of ass, but it was a good concept, and he tried yes. his best. Is 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 the that movie with Shia LaBeouf? Um, the Collectors. The, Honey Boy. the Collectors dog shit. Oh, that's the David Ayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. The tax collector. Yeah, yeah. But Doodoo but but I do th- but I do think he's obviously shown to us that he's a competent filmmaker. He can make good films. And I think that that is apparent in this movie. He took a a script that is horrific. It is atrocious. This, the fact that this movie got made is insane to me. (laughs) I think the fact that Jason Statham signed on and David Ayer was like, yeah, I could, I could see how this would be, this would be kind of cool and this could work is the only reason this dog shit film got made because the plot is non-existent. There's no character arc. There's no character development. There is no growth. There is no, uh, the, the, the lore and the world building is lazy and haphazard and forced. And it is, it is, it is like a horrific, horrific piece of writing. But David, David Ayer was like, all right, fuck it. Y'all want to see Jason Statham cool, kill motherfuckers in cool ways? I got you. And it worked, bro. I'm sorry. It worked for me. Speaking of the world building, I wrote that down, too. I'm like, this movie needed more world building of the Beekeeper organization. No, Everything else... it needed less. It needed less no, world building. I want to understand, I wanna understand <laughs> what's going on. I want to I... with all the different beekeepers. Yes. <laughs> I need Thank it. You. I think there's only one at a time, I think, is the... I no, guess they, no, yeah, no. It's like, it's like they one like... city or something. Yeah, that's a good, on the little I think, map. I, I guess that's a good point, Matt. Okay, what I was... Basically, let's just kind of basically explain what it's about, essentially. Just a retired... A, a guy who's a beekeeper living with an old lady uh, who, mm-hmm. who takes care of him. He gave She gave him an opportunity to kind of raise his bees on her land, they become friends. She invites him over for dinner. She gets scammed out of her entire life like savings. A dumbass. The, the charity, her charity that she runs got scammed. So she feels lost, doesn't know what to do, ends up killing herself. Her daughter's a FBI it's agent. Wild. Uh, Jason Statham finds out about this, wants to get revenge, and tracks down basically the people Not responsible revenge. for justice justice <laughs> basically gets revenge and justice on the people who enacted you know this this horrific thing like stealing and they have like this whole thing where they steal from from old people, old people. but mm-hmm. sounds but, bro, it's like and it's like and it's like the president's son is actually in charge of like yeah, the company it's, it's, it's so i i knew the moment they showed that bitch i was like she's the her president I said, I guarantee it mm-hmm. for a fact. She's the leader of the free world. Because only in a movie would the United States of America ever elect a woman as president. Because in real life, these motherfuckers are too sexist and misogynistic to let that happen. But I don't know, man. It was I, Josh Hutchison was great. Jason Statham was great. Gerardo I had mentioned off camera. Uh, Jeremy Irons is phoning it the fuck in. Mm-hmm. And I still loved it. <laughs> but he's great. He's- but that man's great. a thespian uh, to his core. Yeah, Josh He's Hutcherson dead, was, was selling. Josh bro. Hutcherson was great. Was selling? Nah, he was selling, bro. <laughs> he was just. A, he was oh, you didn't like him. You didn't like They him? told him go in there and be a crypto bro. Go in there and be a tech bro. He said, "All right, cool." He was just Elon Musk with cool hair. That's all he was. But and like, you didn't like. You didn't like his 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 character or his portrayal of what's his name, Derek. Davin, Davin Forth, Davin Forth, Davin Forth, Davin Forth. Nah, he was alright. That is a I presidential mean, ass name. 
very giving I, very it's giving very politicians giving very state I think, senators i think the film i think the money. film i think the old film money. took way too way too long to get started i think it was fucking way, long. i think it was way too exposition heavy it was boring as fuck because jason statham's not a good actor the script is dog shit and nothing interesting happens in like the first 40 minutes it's no, not no one is a good actor except for josh hutcherson and fucking uh, Jeremy Irons. That's and it. What's, and the weird guy who has and, a fucked and, up uh, face. What's her name? Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna bug me. The the woman who plays the old lady at the beginning, Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. Rashad. Was she? Good? Felicia I Rashad. Didn't... Yeah, she was an amazing actress. Mm-hmm. What? She had two set, two scenes, brother. She had two scenes to she got to do a lot to, to to do something, and she was still ass. I don't she care if she's good in something else. She wasn't good in this. Oof. Okay. Hot take. Hot no, take. it's Very not a hot take. take. You can, you can. She did what she could with what she had, and it was ass. So she couldn't, she couldn't cook with gas. She's not Jeremy Irons. That's... <laughs> She's not like Jeremy. Sexism to me. No, but I'll get the but fuck it's, out of here. But no, no, but but but, but I mean, I guess that, that just goes to say that, like we said, nothing happens in the first forty minutes of the movie. You're just like, uh, can like I know what this is. Mm-hmm. Why are you keeping it from me? Give it to me. I want it. I know what this is. Stop. Give me the fucking movie. Give me Jason Statham fucking dudes up. And when he mm-hmm. does and he starts, that's when the movie picks up and it, you know, and, it, and you're in for a good time. But uh, but the whole world building and exposition and establishing who these kids, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck that mm-hmm. that bitch is Felicia Rashad's daughter. I don't care about her strained relationship her with camera. her mother. Get her off, Get the her off screen. camera. Don't let her fucking say any lines in front of the camera again. Get, go get a real, a normal fucking job. <laughs> Stay out of Hollywood. Jesus Christ. I forgot her name. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to look it up. He didn't like the <laughs> actress who played the daughter. Uh, Emmy uh, Raver uh, Lampin. Is that her name? Yeah, Lampin. I think she, uh, she's yeah. also in Umbrella Academy. Equally as dog shit in that show. Get her the fuck away from Hollywood. Never, never again. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Right. I think she's, she's beautiful. I think oh, she's, yeah. she's all sure, right with what I she guess. had. I don't think she was that terrible either. Hey, you know, she, she, you know she, she, she's an icon. I had more for... time to develop hate for her because I watched that she's, fuck ass show. She's an icon <laughs> because she reshot the film while four months pregnant. I'll give her that for sure. I didn't even know that. I don't so give I, a I, fuck. I've, I've gone to she work. shot dog over. shit twice? Okay. <laughs> We're joking, but we're not being sexist. I mean, <laughs> we're just kidding. Yeah, I'm no, that is amazing. impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. Her line delivery was still ass, but I'm good for her that she was on set. I wouldn't have done it. I think also uh, that um, you know, this movie. Uh, I put that the the plot is very predictable, but still, you know, yeah. fun just to watch. It's one of those movies where you don't really go in. I guess with. You're not walk. It's not like Oppenheimer. You're not walk going in there like, oh, it's gotta be this. It's gonna be some grand, some grand telling of a of a film, a story, a masterpiece. You're going there. You know what you're going. You know what you're getting when you go in there. Um, this movie had the right amount of comedy, the right amount of absurdity, and they topped it all off with you know excessive but necessary action. I think they're trying to solidify. If he's not already solidified as you know. The next Stallone esque character, as far as action star movies go, Stallone wishes. Uh-oh. No, you know what they're trying to solidify is a is an expanded universe. I guarantee fucking t you. There's gonna be was, more beekeepers. Was, there's yeah. gonna be beekeeper okay. uh, extended universe. Well, there's gonna be a, ge- a beekeeper, beekeeper t- show. The hornet's nest. Well, the way the, the way the show the way the movie ended. The way the movie ended, yeah, it's, that's a good cliffhanger to be like, okay, now what's going to happen in movie number two? Beekeeper two, two B. I hate two that keeper. shit. That's so dumb, dude. Two, no, Beekeeper two, like you said, two B or not two B. Two B or not two B. Two B or not two B. Put us in the writer room, bro. Amazon, but put us on the on the marketing the team, bro. That was, I think that was one of that was one of the that was one of the things that was really jarring about the film, though. I thought it was too like ham-fisted and heavy-handed the mm. fact that they're like uh, there's this secret shadow organization Jeff, jeremy irons once he finds really you it's good. over you yeah but it's like no, it's good. like the whole the whole explain it more explain it more. it's just it was just too much it's like if you would have just said he's a beekeeper 
and he, they were just said he's a part of an organization that not even the CIA knows about. And that's it. That's it. Don't show yeah. us. Don't show us him talking to the lady on the computer. And, you know, like, don't even show us the other beekeeper. Like, I think I think that like, was the, funny to me. It was the, funny. The but it was so were stupid, coming up, bro, bro, immediately crazy. getting fucking bodied. And the gas dressed like a the, fucking she's dressed like a fucking cyberpunk character for no like, reason. The <laughs> gas station not blowing up despite getting shot. Like mm-hmm. fifty thousand times with a minigun. I don't know if you saw this. Um, it blew up, it did blow up, but it, it was later. Up. Like ten minutes <laughs> after they got shot, it was so dumb. But a great time. It was fun. Who gives a fuck, you know? And I think, uh, look, I just, I, I'll, I'll, I, pre- I pre- basically pretty much already spoken about how I feel, and I'm just leave it at at, at this, you know, like, like again. I've said this before. I think we just need to realize that, you know, and take things at face value and take things for what they are, right? A film like, for example, The Zone of Interest is made with a very specific intent, right? It's made to be uh, to, to tell a specific story, and the filmmaker had a very specific um, message that they wanted to send with that film, right? The Beekeeper is not any, uh, is not thought out, or meticulous, or or not or, 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 or thought, not even thought out. Well thought. It's not, not even thought out. It's not thought out at all. Exactly. It's thought out all right. They thought of something, but they, they, they didn't think of shit. But it was like, but but like I said, if you let at least a competent filmmaker be like, all right, I know what this is. I will not take myself seriously. I will not take this film seriously. And you have an actor like Jason Statham who was like, what you want me to go in there and do what I do best? Done. Consider it done. Mm-hmm. And David is like, I agree. I'm on board. I'll just make you look cool as shit and 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 make this a, at least a competently made dog shit movie. And and you get what you get. And call it a day. They all got paid. We all had a great time. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes that's all it takes. Uh you know, when me you go to it's the not it was Hear definitely not Hear my worst up. uh theater experience. That's true. Not even not even this year. You wanna oh, know no. what my worst I theater is? Last, my last year. <laughs> You already had a worse theater experience. It's been like twenty twenty three. No, no, yeah, like I, weeks, I, I still thought we were in twenty twenty three. No, my bad. It's been one month, brother. Time is an illusion. This, this movie, where would we put it in terms of like Expendables three is down here. It's and better Death than Race it's better than all the Expendables. It's here. better than Expendables. Like basics, better midway than Expendables through. two through four, and it's better. It's than, worse than all the John Wick movies. Um, worse. I wouldn't say worse. worse. Well, yeah, it's worse yeah. than all the John Wick movies. Yeah. It's worse than the yeah. worst John. It's worse than even the worst John, John Wick, Wick movies. It's John Wick Two. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's worse. Than, it's worse than the John uh, John Wick Continental Show. But that's I don't know. That about has that. I haven't Gibson, seen that show. That's it's automatically Gibson. bad. It's, it's worse Gibson. than the John Wick movies, but it's that, better that, than shit. It's got a handicap. It's better than shit like The Expendables, for example. The Expendables which, has the first one is exactly. the only good one. And it's even better that's a than, stretch. I like it's too. better. It's better and better made than the fast than Fast X, for example. Literally everything. It was better, better than Hobbs and Shaw. Discounted. I don't know. No, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw is a cult classic, bro. Goes hard. Everyone's holding, everyone's holding like, a helicopter and tied up to the back of a truck, bro. That right there is cinema. That's something you know, that's what I'm saying. know about. You know, it's like in the realm of like the Meg and Meg Two. You mm-hmm. know, like. Like this is a good time, fun time. Put it on, get drunk, get high, whatever. Have some friends over, have a partner that's over. The y'all just chilling. Sober. Y'all are chilling, watching this movie, wrong. and boom, that's a great time, you know. And sometimes, because mm. people don't want to watch stuff for the most part, I want to watch stuff that makes you think or makes you feel or makes mm. you, or you have to be engaged. You know, unfortunately, that's kind of where our where our culture is now and and what our moving watching culture is like. So yeah, you know, a bunch I'm of all fucking f- nerds. Yeah, so I'm all for. You know, having something you can just put on, have a good time, call it a day, not think about it ever the fuck again in your goddamn life, and 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 you know, and not lose some sleep over it. So let's do. I a, fuck a quick, with it. I love let's it. do a quick, quick, quick rating before we move on to the next uh, next topic. Luis, what's your rating, bro? Seven. Seven out of ten. Gerardo, seven out of ten. Here? It's like a six, I'd say. Yeah. Six. Yep. 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 I put it as seven out of ten as well because it wasn't, it did not belong in the 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 tier ranking of of Megan, 
in plane, right. but it definitely did not belong in the same ranking as Guardians and all the other now, good let shit. Let me specify. Megan and Plane are not on the same fucking field. Get the fuck Plane out of here. Plane is dog shit. Plane Megan is, is fun. fucking Plane? horrible. Plane? Megan was, okay. Megan was pretty right. Megan was a fun yeah. movie. Speaking of Megan, you all saw that trailer for that Abigail movie. Which Abigail, is basically a vampire I, think looks, Megan. I think it looks dope. I think it looks it's dope. Just vampire Megan, watching that. Vampire Megan. Sign me up. Nah. Uh, got, let me just say, let me just so spec- much- I was gonna say, I'm just saying, 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 I don't saying, think so many trailers that we saw that we, we, we y'all, y'all, when y'all, all, when y'all hear the future shit. episodes, when y'all hear these next, like, the next two months worth of episodes, y'all gonna see us cook for real. Madam Web next month, don't, do not miss. Bob Martin, we're gonna have four episodes about, about I don't know if I'm gonna watch that one, y'all, yeah, have fun. Four episodes about Madam Web. Ready for it. <laughs> 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 we're gonna say, um, I just wanna specify, I don't think The Beekeeper is a good movie. It's mm. not. It's bad. He loved it. It's really bad. It's his but favorite for movie what it here. is, for what it is, it's fun and it's enjoyable and it's a good time. So fuck I you. I agree. It's a so movie you can put on in the back of a party. Why you do homework? It'll be fine. It's a movie. That's why I gave it. <laughs> I gave it a second. It's not a film. <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah. I think movie. my rankings for films have been, you know, tainted by movies such as Shit Zam. Folly of the Gods and the Flash, the Ash, the Trash. Folly of the God, the, the Ash. Trash. <laughs> um, who, who, who's your favorite character in the Beekeeper, though? That's what I want to know. Bro. The Beekeeper? Bro, it's just Jeremy like Irons. Did, no, did you hear, did you hear guy, him say? The cyberpunk, you hear him the cyberpunk say? guy with the mutton chops. Oh, the oh, Irish the, dude? The, prosthesis? With the prosthetic oh, leg. Yeah, that guy was oh, sick. That voice you, oh, you, 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 he was Australian, you, wasn't he? No, he was definitely Irish. He was Scottish or Irish. I promise you. All I know Australian, is he's not Australian. Then it's from I can, the UK. I can, under, I can understand Australian people. That was Irish. That's Barry Keoghan on like Trin. That's Trin. His, his Barry name. Trin no. Trin. Okay. Don't do Barry like that. That character's name is Lazarus. That's why well, he was some type of he's Brit, he's some type of Irish. Nah, bro, he got stabbed. He's coming back. He's, he's getting dead. thrown in the pit. He's dead, he's, bro. He's extra his dead, His name bro. is Lazarus. That no, means no, no, he's no, coming back. The Lazarus pit. I, I doubt that much uh, thought went into naming these characters. There's no way. For being no way. This, this, this is just a cool fucking no name. Spring Rider was like, yo, this just sounds dope. <laughs> Lazarus is cool. That's the what best, we're naming him. My favorite part of the movie is whenever he was fighting those uh, SWAT, those former those operators, those Seal ex-military dudes. Guys. Oh, the yeah. Seal Team yeah. 6 dudes. He was beating them up and he said, he said, something, something, we got a problem. He was like, I am a problem. I was like, hard. Just like me, he real. I see him. Just, just like me, he's a hundred percent same guy. But yeah, man, so the that was a good. Has like superhuman strength, right? Because he was kicking people like across rooms and shit. That's I see that. It's, 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 cool. it's This is the lore I want to see explored in Beekeeper too. Bro, the Hornet. That's Jason Statham's, Statham's um, no. signature move, bro. Kicking people yeah, like that. The that's Spartan, Spartan kick. kick does. That's his signature Probably, move. He says it. He says it in the movie. He says. Lazarus says, you're just a man. And he says, I know. He said it like, that's I it. Know. That's all the lore you need. It's, it's going to be recon. It's going to be recon. Nah, bro. That's watch. all the lore you need. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, also, <laughs> if someone who's had a staple put in them, it doesn't hurt that much. The guy was being a baby. He was a bitch, though. Your forehead? That, yeah, he's that being a bitch. That character was a pussy. That character's a pussy. Yeah, though. pussy. Pussy. That, fucking, forehead, that goddamn Boston Italian guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Pus, Pusio. Bro, Pusio. bro was dialing the phone with his middle finger. Nah, That's that was real. a fun time. That was a good. That was a good film. Everybody in that movie was uh, what's his name? Uh, Josh Hutcherson character Derek was you know a very annoying and salty character. But let's speaking of salt, let's talk about a movie that we all have I seen. Fucking knew it. Salt I burn. fucking knew it. Salt burn. I know. Let's it, talk bro. about let's talk about real switch. cinema, bro. Let's talk about real cinema right now because that's don't like also it. also debatable. Yeah, people about, people are not, fan, more, not fans of this movie. That's because they are not knowers who know. It's so simple. They're dumb. They do speak your truth. truth. If you don't okay, like speak this movie, truth. you're goofy. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. Go. Let me tell you, bro. What's my salt truth? burn? Oh no, let's go. Salt burn. All I'll say is when I started, I, I went into this movie off of vibes because I was on Twitter. And I saw people posting the uh, salt burn challenge from TikTok, and somebody posted There's a clip a of Barry Keoghan. Yeah, yeah dancing to murder on the dance house. floor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, it's very Fuck stupid if you ask me, because you're just movie's giving everyone not, entry, not for and exit you. points into your house. Like, stop showing off 
ways to rob Let you. Keep showing no, no, keep <laughs> no. Let me see the <laughs> points of selection. entry. <laughs> I, I just, just see the points of entry. Keeper, bro. Let me see I just the, came off the, the beekeeper. I got, I got, I got tactics <laughs> ingrained in my head. I hated that. Damn girl, said zone is, your name, is your name Jonathan Glazer? Because I'm trying to see your zone of interest. Oh my Ew. god. Ew. Nah, see Saltburn. I Ew. saw that clip of Barry Barry Keoghan in the in the the cemetery. I'm like, what is he doing? And I realized he was, you know. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself. He's speaking truth about that. He saw Barry's we fat. Got, you got on because said, of Twitter. You said this shit looks fire. I was like, this shit is 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 wild, bro. So I decided to watch it. I saw it was on the Zon. I tuned into that's two Amazon movies we've watched this week, by the way. The Zon. I was the on the Zon. I turned that thing on and I watched Saul Burn. And it started off, you know, they had Barry looking like a damn Twig. Harry Potter from Temu. Um, he was in there in Oxford trying to learn some shit. He was beefing with Gran Turismo. Um, and then he <laughs> made... <laughs> that is Gran Turismo. That's oh, your Gran Turismo is so funny, bro. That's his, that's his legacy. <laughs> he was beefing with this he really was beefing with a he was beefing with, with a Jan Modenborough, and then he became friends with um Jacob Elordi with Elvis. And Fine ass. from there, that's where the movie. That's where the movie is. It gets better in, in, instantly, instantly. I was like, Jacob Elordi's in this? eyebrow piercings exist Turn in two thousand six. Turn me I don't know. I'm in there. It, it works. Just Turn me up. You. I was in that. I was locked in. So, so Jacob really Elordi, liked I liked it, and then it started to get you know a little bit, a little bit off the rails from my taste. You know, bro was in there licking semen. He was sucking You're too up. Soft, bro. You're semen fucking back. soft, bro. You're fucking soft, bro. Wait. Is that a crime now? All of a sudden, I didn't say it was a crime. It's just right. some shit I wouldn't partake in. homophobic. Oh, so when women that. lick semen, it's okay. But if a man does it, you can tell. Yeah, it's unnatural. You, you, you said, ever told a girl? You ever told a girl before not to lick your semen from a bathtub in the drain? Does not know in general. No, I'm talking about in the semen, drain. Semen. Yeah, me, semen and semen. Shut up. Yeah, you me personally, this guy hates me personally. Me hates me personally, nah. <laughs> nah, I didn't say that. Woke mom, I get told him. You, Woke I just, mom, get him. I just told you I was locked in because of Jacob Elordi. I just told you I was locked in because of Jacob Elordi. No, that's I'm, true, not true. I'm not licking a bathtub never drink. Lick that's that. universal, though. That's universal. That's not, that doesn't win you brownie points by stating the obvious. I'm universally Everyone's locked, locked in, in on Jacob. Anyways, on Jacob Barry, Barry was in there licking the bathtub drain. I was kind of weirded out by that. Then he was eating, <laughs> you know, Bloody coochie. I'm like, he turned to a getting vampire. His red wings. Proud of he was him. getting his red wings. And then, like, oh boy. Just all like types me. of shit happened. He was That's jerking crazy. off his enemies. I was like, bro, this is wild, bro. <laughs> just like he's me, off, bro. He's, he's just like me. Yeah. He's killing with kindness. He was jerking off Gran Turismo and suddenly, like, threatening him, too. Keep your friends like, Damn, close, bro. but your enemies' dicks closer. But, like, all this shit would happen. Then, like, the part that made everything click the most was in the maze scene whenever he told uh whenever uh Jacob Elordi Felix told um Oliver Barry that you make my blood run cold and I was like oh something's about to go down it's all gonna start making sense right here and man. after that yeah no shit man sense, all <laughs> fucking made sense Matt just discovered spots I was spots. like I was like, Matt was I was like, like yo story structure <laughs> nah, I was like, I was like, like he said, what the fuck I was you like that's why, he was, that's why he was jerking off his enemies it makes sense I get it now that shit makes nah, sense he just did that because he wanted to what about you, Gerardo? Your your thoughts on on uh... on Saltburn? I thought it was yeah. fun, man. I think uh, mm-hmm. people who hate on it are just annoying. Uh, you guys you. don't watch movies that much. Um, if you think that what he did was crazy and super crazy, I'm like y'all. You're soft. You're y'all soft. aren't cool with gay people. Um, the yeah. stories I've heard that was that was nothing. Um, it was a fun movie. And, soft uh, bullshit. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Jacob looked great. Barry's got a hog on him. He got that motherfucking surprise, thing on him, boy. Didn't surprise boy, me. I'm, cr- I'm Don't let me be TSA. <laughs> the way I'm confiscating that fucking weapon, the way I'm boy. Put, the, way I'm him in, the way I'm putting him through the x-ray machine five times. <laughs> Bro had this. Sorry, go back. Bro had this on him. <laughs> um, I think 
look, I I agree. I think much like like yeah, my that thoughts wing, on wing, keeper, wing. I kind of approached Saltburn in a very similar way. You know, I think I think Emerald Fennell is a fantastic filmmaker. I think she's got a phenomenal eye. Fennell? I think I think her her um her eye for composition is wonderful. I think she gets she gets great performances from her actors. I think the film looks beautiful. I think it's well acted, well directed. It's got it's like a very like I said before. I think it's a very good vibe, like a very good vibes movie. It was it's a two-hour like, euphoria about, uh, episode. Yeah, episode. Put it on, actors. have a good time. See but sexy better. people do but shit, better. like have sex, do weird, crazy, rich, sexy people stuff. Like who doesn't like seeing that? Like that was cool. I think the script again is dog shit. It has absolutely nothing important or smart to say about class or wealth disparity, uh, disparity or mm -hmm. sex or classism or racism and or, or homosexuality mm -hmm. or queerness. It has absolutely nothing interesting or smart to say about any of these things. In fact, it says nothing. It doesn't say anything. But Except how here's to, the thing: where is to rob rich people, right, right. But, but where, plan. where a lot of people think that's a problem, I was just like, oh, okay, who gives a shit? That's, that's not the film she wanted. That's not the film she wanted to make. She didn't want to make a film. Like, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. In my head, I'm saying she didn't want to make a film that had something to say about the wage gap, about class disparity, about. Uh, you know, uh, about any of these of these topics that affect us today. She didn't she wanted to make a film set in this world. Right. About that has a lot of ambiguity, a lot of open endedness, a lot of kind of fill in the blanks for yourself and just kind of and just wanted to be like, hey, I have I have these really cool idea these really cool ideas of shots that I want in this movie. <laughs> I want Jacob Elordi, who's super hot. I want Barry Keoghan, who's super hot. And I want them, I want Barry to do this crazy shit. Here's the final scene. I want his dick at f f flapping in the wind. And, and, and then we'll fill in the blanks for everything that happens in the middle. And some, and I, and I think <laughs> for, for Barry Keoghan's dick. And I think, um, and I think that that's okay. You know, like who gives a fuck? Uh, like I don't know. I just think people are overthinking it. And I think if you again take take it for what it is, take it at face value, just watch it, have a good time, hate it, love it, whatever, and then just call it a day. Like it's not gonna change much in the grand scheme of like filmmaking as a whole, you know, or your life if you watch it. Like it's just it is what it is. It's a film that looks really good. That I don't know. It has absolutely nothing to say about anything. I feel like movie. it comes down to people. Um, this is a, a topic we kind of touch on here and there. Um, it comes down to people going into the movie and expecting. We literally just said it's about the beekeeper going into a movie and expecting a certain thing and then being upset that you're not getting. You came into that movie with an expectation, and when that expectation is not met, you want to be all, oh, 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 oi, 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 it's not good. Just to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, Emerald Fennell is an Oscar winner. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and she won for I think it was best original screenplay, uh, which is promising the, young the, woman, which yeah. for promising young woman, and she was nominated for best. She, I liked it too. I love promising young woman when a lot of people hated it, and and she, it got and she got nominated, nominated for best director. So, so the point that you're making, like people did come into this uh, expecting something because she had set that precedent already but what i'm saying is don't be so fucking um tied to to your expectations mm -hmm. this is, go this into is it a, and let the experience guide you don't be like the this director's is what I want. version sorry this is the go director's for? version of a one for me one for uh them she just had yeah. a good time yeah, she exactly. Make a long music she's making video. a movie that she wanted to make. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what, that is the, perfect. The, the whole movie and if she didn't even work. She wasn't, wasn't even caring about that. It's still a good time. Stop exactly. being a bitch. That's what I'm saying. She's she like, this is the vibe I want. This is the aesthetic I want. Now I just got to make a two-hour movie that about that. The thing she yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah. Even if, uh, even, she, if there's a message, if there's a message that we're not getting, I don't think we're missing out. Who cares? It's fun. No, uh, she, everyone, she. Everyone's cool in this movie. Yeah, she just made she met. made what she wanted to make was the last the last scene with the the murder on the dance floor the the, yeah. the ending scene that's it everything else she was like I literally 
That's literally what I said. She's like, this is how I want it to end. This is what the final scene is going to be is Carrie's dick, uh, Barry's dick flapping in the wind, and we'll just fill in the, the, all the blanks on the way there, you know? Also, can we shout out uh, Barry's workout routine? He's fucking jacked bro, in this movie. Bro was looking yeah, he's, very, you know? He's he jacked in, in there. general. Well, yeah, but like, he's not as, he, you can't tell in like a movie like, in, like uh, Eternal Banshee's of Banshee's Banshee's in the Share. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, sure, where he also, tell. where he died. Like, no. That guy is, that's my James Bond. That's your James oh, Bond? That's my James Bond. Whoa. An Irish James Bond. We will have Sean our Connery James Bond Scottish. episode soon. Sean Connery was a uh, woman beater. Fuck that guy. Speaking yeah. of, oh, uh, hey, speaking hey. of, of, don't speak of, ill of the dead. Stop. stop. I will speak of, ill um, of the dead. Fuck that guy. Speak... Nobody's rotting in hell. Speaking <laughs> All right, of, uh, of so Europeans. Yes, boy. Speaking of mm-hmm. Europeans, to answer your question about that Lazarus fella from um, uh, Beekeeper, he's British. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. British and he lives in South it. Africa. So not I only knew. is he a Brit, he's also in South Africa too. His accent is all types Ooh. of just everywhere, Fucked bro. Up. That's why he's like that's he was why I can Chappie. understand. He said <laughs> Chappy good robot. Chappy good Good Robot. Uh, <laughs> Devil tells Chappie. Magnum Opus, in my opinion. Stop. Green Knight Shanto is Copley, best I movie. Got bored. Shanto, Shanto Copley's best movie, Chappie. Shanto Copley needs to stop don't, making Don't movies. say that when District 9 is literally right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. My fault, my fault. Didn't you he mean Hardcore no. Henry? Real. <laughs> you're, talking about, you're talking about the A-team, <laughs> brother. Movie. You're talking about the A-team, <laughs> brother. He was in that remake, huh? He was in the A-team? That, that movie is hard with Liam Neeson. He was in the remake. Who was uh, he? Bradley Cooper was in he, was, um, yep, he was um he was Murdoch he was Murdoch who's the guy who's the guy who played the new Mr T oh Rampage Jackson the UFC guy that or guy. MMA guy oh it was Randy the it was Randy Jackson Rampage Jackson I thought it was Randy Rampage Jackson wasn't that his name Quinton they called him Double R Jackson mm-hmm. oh. no but Randy yeah Jackson I think also, I think can we Sovereign... highlight some of the great uh, performances in this movie. Sure. Richard E. Grant him. is always killing it. Yes. Fucking love him. Love My girl, him. um Rosamund Pike. Rosamund Pike. Pike was phenomenal. Never, never seen her do a bad fucking job. She, she's, Granted, she's I've only great. seen a couple of her movies, but she's a great actor. She's actress. great in I everything her. she's in. Uh, she more, who's she who's more the sister? Gooder. The sister, the sister. Venetia. I liked her, but I forgot her name. Let's look it up. Allison. Um, Allison, Allison Oliver. Allison she Oliver, she was, she great. was great. Ireland yes, she produces was. the best actors in the world. There, I said it. Is she Irish? I, I think so. What do you mean, oh, Ireland? You know, bro. you know who's great? Gerardo. Uh, Luis, and I, Luis and I are not from Ireland, bro. We're from Houston, Texas. What you talking <laughs> about? Y'all, y'all from Ireland in spirit. Yeah, we're, 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 I love Houston, freedom. Mexico Houston, and Ireland. Ireland. Mexico Houston, and Ireland are, are <laughs> we're brothers. Cousins. We're brother countries, yeah. yeah. Really? Um, no, I mean, Carrie Mulligan, obviously, from... Work with Emerald Fennell. Yeah, Promising I love that. Woman. I love that. I didn't notice that was her until like she had just left. She's Wait. amazing in everything that she's was in the as promising well. Promising young woman. The promising young woman. <laughs> and the guy, I don't know if y'all know him. Gerardo, I know you don't watch House of the Dragon, but the guy oh. who made, who played Michael uh, Gavi, mm-hmm. uh, his his friend, the other nerdy guy at Oxford, the nerd. with the I love glasses. The nerd. That was my guy. His name is Ewan Mitchell. He's uh, he's amazing. I knew like these guys actor. like that in high school. They were the best. <laughs> he's, He's in House of the Dragon. Uh, he's awesome. I know he's on another show, but I didn't care about yeah, it. I didn't watch this, it. This film is definitely... But, uh, I, Archie, I, I think it was don't good. be in movies no more. Oh. You didn't like Archie? No, nah, we got to cast him in the CJ no, Stroud movie. He was just good let, in me, let me cook. I just fucking hate cook. Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so, what about yeah, the boy this Duncan? Is... Duncan was weirding the me butler. out. Butler. The, the whole butler. time. That guy was weird as shit. I loved him. I loved him, bro. He was Paul, awesome. Paul Reese. He Paul weirded Reese, me out the yeah. whole time. Paul Reese? Who the fuck is Paul Reese? But Duncan. yeah, this movie, he said this movie is directed by Emerald Fennell, an Oscar an Oscar yeah. nominated, Oscar uh, winning. Oscar winning. Let me rephrase. Oscar winning director. Uh, speaking of the Oscars, we did get our Oscar she didn't win. For 20- she didn't win for directing, by the way, before people were like, who she, she should have. Oscar for directing. She should have. <laughs> won for for writing. Which speaking is crazy. of our uh, speaking of our of Oscar of Oscar nominations, 
Uh, we got the Oscar 2024 nominations. Wait, wait, wait. What did you give Saltburn? You didn't rate it. Oh, we're doing the rating oh, too. Yeah. Um, also gave it a. What? Let me see. I gave it a seven point five. Hold on. Give it six. I gave it a seven seven point five. And that point five is because of Barry Kilgan. Give me a six. You gave Hog. You gave uh. Fucking the beekeeper, beekeeper seven, seven, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I that's did, crazy. Yeah, I did. You said beekeeper more better. Beekeeper <laughs> is more better. If if, if Saltburn <laughs> would have had more fucking in it, it would have been an eight. But I, again, I, I gave think, it. An I eight. think I gave look, it an eight. Look, the beekeeper script is dog shit, but at least it has stuff to counteract that. Saltburn's script is just like. Going it's, nowhere. It but will, it's still it better no- than fucking uh, the beekeeper. I don't know. Oh, the script? Sure. Yeah. But, sure, but the bar's in hell, me? brother. Like, yeah. Come no, on. but look, but but we're talking about the script is better. The actors are way fucking better. Yeah. And then mm. it looks just as good, I'd say, like in terms of what they're doing. I think they're both very competent filmmakers. I guess, I, I guess I, I'm I'm just really disappointed because I feel being like Salt, a bitch. Salt Burns had a higher ceiling. Right, yeah, I, I think the beekeeper had a higher floor, you know, because I think higher floor. It, the beekeeper because the beekeeper knows what it is and isn't taking itself too seriously. Saltburn was going to be an Oscar Burn. winner. Sure, yes, exactly, and I and and it the power felt, of expectation. It, yeah, power of expectation. <laughs> and it disappointed me. Whereas beekeeper, I was expecting absolutely nothing, and I got nothing. Therefore, my expectations <laughs> so you were, you know, sad. yeah, exactly. I wasn't sad. <laughs> It's not. I'm, I'm not saying Beekeeper's a better movie. Let me re-emphasize this. I don't think well, let's, Beekeeper's let's, better. Let's, than... let's go by the ratings. What got a better rating? Beekeeper, <laughs> Beekeeper's a seven, seven out of twenty. Seven out of twenty. <laughs> Saltburn is a six <laughs> out of ten. How, how's that? How's that? Mathematically speaking, that doesn't. Yeah, it's like a three. Yeah. It's exactly. Like three. So it's good. That's so it's about good. right. It's about right. So we're good. Yeah, it works out. So yeah. But no, uh, yeah, it's good to see um, Oscar win, Oscar nominated, Oscar winning directors doing their thing. That's, but speaking of the Oscar nominations, we do have our twenty twenty four Oscar nominations out now. Uh I don't know, man. I mean, see, I see so many good of everything that I want. I want to pick them all. If it were me, I could pick them all. But they can only be one. Wait, wait, winner. What are we? What are we talking about? We're just gonna mention. Let's go. With that. Just, we'll go category by category, we'll, discussing yeah, ranking by um, ranking the important and we'll, ones. And we'll and we'll. It's gonna be and we're, gonna, and we're gonna read out who it is and who we think is gonna win and should win. Mm-hmm. I'll just sure. list. I'll list out. I'll go by category. I'll list out every nominee in their their film, and then we'll just discuss who we think should win. Okay. So we're well, starting at the very top of the. I'm on the Oscars website, by the way. Shout out Oscars dot org. The Academy, oh, yeah. The Academy dot org. Oscars dot org slash Oscars slash ceremony. What's gonna win everything? Uh, first, watch. Yeah, the first you're good one, at guessing this, and I hate it. The what first is, one. I know. Last is, year, uh, bro, I killed it. The first one is uh, actor in a leading role, and the nominees are as follows: Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo Mid. for Rustin. Paul Giamatti for okay. The Holdovers, Killian Murphy win. for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Lane Wright win. for American Fiction. It was great in that so, movie. I like him. Um, it's between Paul Giamatti and, and Killian Murphy. They're the two Agreed. kind of leading the pack, and they're well, far and above. Killian Murphy. They're Peaky above and Blinders beyond. Is a boring ass show. <laughs> Hater. Could not Hater. get past season two. Do you like Oppenheimer? Do you like him in Oppenheimer? Absolutely. Oh, you need to watch it. <laughs> I know it's, it's great. three hours, man. It's, it's crazy. Great. It goes by really I don't know fast. Where to, don't be I don't scared, know where to completely bro. and legally stream it. You know, it's... Amazon. Ah, no, it's Peacock. It's on Peacock it's still right movie now. movie theaters. Yeah, it's back in theaters. Yeah, they, they're theaters. showing it back in, in 30 crazy. and 70 look, millimeter. Look, it, it's it's going to be Killian Murphy in a perfect world, but Paul Giamatti would win. He's phenomenal in The Holdovers. That movie is great. Um, he, I think, does a lot more in that film. Than, than Killian Murphy does. Killian just kind of looks like this. He's asked to do more in that film than Killian is in Oppenheimer. Um, but Oppenheimer is going to win basically every Oscar. But Oppenheimer, for... Killian is Irish, so you know what Killian I'm saying about Irish. those actors. Yeah. You know, we love the Irish, yeah. But um, yeah, so 
I think it's going to be Killian Murphy and but Padre Mari should win. Interesting that you didn't say Coleman Domingo because you're racist. No, I don't, you don't no, recognize him. He just knows Rustin's Rust no, a bad movie. <laughs> he just knows I the academy. Coleman. The academy is not going to pick a black man over Killian Murphy Afro- and Padre Mari. Afro Latino man. King. Afro Latino. Right. Afro Latino yes, king. He's ours too. Yeah, exactly. Y'all can't <laughs> have him. He's our friend. <laughs> <laughs> he's bridging. He's bridging. But even within, oh, we'll get to that one. I get to these next categories. I got yeah, I got go that one. Um, actor in a supporting role. We've got nominees Ugh. are Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction, Robert De Niro, King. Killers of the Flower Moon, oh, Oppenheimer with in. Robert Downey Jr. Um, well, probably would have been Ryan Gosling for Barbie and Mark Ruffalo for no. Poor Things. Definitely Dog shit. Not. Definitely not, no. I think it's going to be Robert. I don't think it should be, but I think they're going to give it to him because maybe his dad's dead. I don't know if he's dead yet. Who cares? Dead, yeah. yeah. Who do you think um, win it? I think it should be a black man. Sterling, Sterling K. Brown. K. Brown. Um, I'm tired of all these white people winning these awards. Mm. Uh, yeah, I agree. Robert Downey Jr. <clears throat> is going to win it. Um, and, and I think he should. I think... I just think I think his performance in Oppenheimer is great. I think we know the Academy loves a good narrative. Robert's been doing this forever. We do the whole redemption arc, the whole him being out of Hollywood, Marvel bringing him back, becoming the highest paid the actor, being the, the highest paid actor in in Hollywood because of the MCU, and then finally ending his tenure with Marvel, kind of being on a comeback and now doing an Oscar winning performance. Like it's just everything's lined up for him to win. He's a Nepo baby. He's a, you know, he grew up in the, in the movies. You know, it's perfect. And I think he should win it. I think his performance in Oppenheimer is fantastic. And I love Shirley K. Brown. I loved American fiction. But I think, I think Robert just kind of edges him out just because of, like you I think, said, You think he should win over a black gay character is what you're saying. A warmonger <laughs> is better character. A okay. warmonger. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nice to yeah. see where you stand. Capitalism. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah this is indicative. Day. This is indicative of my political ideology. His views, not his political, <laughs> personal, what he believes as a human being. Right. But yeah, it'll probably be Robert. More than likely, I see. It should I be see Mark Ruffalo though. Fuck no, him. It should be bad <laughs> Ryan Gosling. It should oh, also be bad. Ryan Gosling. I love that Ryan Gosling was like. Never mind. We can talk about that later. That's yeah, up, yeah, that's we'll up, that's there. up there. It's coming up. Uh, next up, we got yeah, actress in a leading role. This one right here, I'm gonna list them off. But I'm gonna tell you, there's one who I know he she needs to win this. There's another one who could very easily win this as well. I'm gonna read these off. I'll tell you who's Matt. not gonna win it. Okay, go for it, Matt. Oh yeah, Annette Annette Benning for Ni- Niad, Lily Gladstone Niad, yeah. for Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller for Anatomy of a Fall, Huller, uh, Carrie Mulligan for Maestro, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. The one that I know is gonna win is Lily Gladstone. I think the one be. who I think could also be. win, the one who Will I think could also win, Super. the one who I think could could also win would be a a huh? good run up because this was an Oscar bait movie. Poor things with Emma Stone. That's my other yeah. pick. And and here's but an interesting I'm, I'm, I'm a... first team all Lily Gladstone. That's my pick. That's that's the general consensus that those are top two. Is Lily Gladstone is basically a lock, but Emma Stone is right on her heels. But here's a nice little wrinkle to that is that uh, Anatomy of a Fall is a French. German American production, co production, right? Mm-hmm. But it's in an international film. But Justine Tree, I'm not to get ahead of myself, but Justine Trier, the director of that film, got direct, got nominated for Best Director. I think that, mm. film, that film won the Golden Globe for Best International Feature and Best Original Screenplay. So it's got, you know, that means people are liking it. It's got it. traction. It's got traction. Critics are liking it. And Sandra Huller is amazing in that film. And she's in another Best Picture nominee, The Zone of Interest. And she's also uh, great in that, is what they're saying. So, you know, so it wouldn't be surprising. And the way Oscar voting works is that it's, um, what's it called? Uh, I forget what it's called. But basically, you're like, well, I like this person as one. This person is two. This person is three. So, you know. It's a popularity contest. A popularity contest. Saying. Yeah. So somebody, yeah. So Lily, so people could be like, oh, Lily Glaston's got it for a lock. So I'll put her at two, and I'll put Sandra Huller as one, and Emma Stone as three, and that'll that's kind of racist. fuck it up, you know. So, 
So it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit more close than people think. But it should be Lady Gladstone. She's far and away the best, the best one. She should win this. This is historic. This is iconic. She's amazing. Give it to Lily or fuck the Academy. It'd be funny if they give it to Annette Benning for oh a movie no one fucking dude. watched. <laughs> that'd be great. For Nyad, bro. That'd be yeah. crazy. What the fuck is even Nyad? I didn't hear about movie, it until the Oscars. It's a movie about. that I've never about, seen. About what? It's a biopic. Yeah. Gross. Still haven't seen it. You know, it's it's yeah. about Diana Nyad, who's a marathon swimmer. Don't bother. Sounds lame. <laughs> don't know who. Don't know who this is. Harpo who this woman. Harpo right. who this woman. I don't know. Who this is. <laughs> What's the next category? Ask <laughs> Um, the next one is actress in supporting role. Um, also Another repeat lock. films on here. Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks for The no. Color Purple, America Ferrer for Barbie, Maybe. Jodie Foster no. for Nyad, and no. Devine Joy Randolph for uh, The Holdovers. Divine, Divine Joy Randolph. Yeah, Divine, Divine Joy Randolph. Randolph. I said Divine, Divine bro. Jordan. I need to get my eyes checked. Um, mm, America Ferrer or uh, Emily Blunt, but I say Daniel Brooks. That's my pick. She was no, killing me. Hollywood hates Purple. Latinos. It's not going to be America. It's not, I mean, no, bro. I don't America, no, no. America, as a America, shouldn't have gotten nominated to begin with. Let's be fucking for real. We uh, women. I, I don't. I love women. I love Hispanic women. That did not deserve an Oscar nomination. But no, was, D- was, Divine Jordan Randolph she won, is probably she. No, I'm not gonna say she won. She got nominated for one. Okay, the Critics' monologue. Choice, oh yeah, but the Critics' Choice Award, uh, America won. But Divine Joy Randolph has won basically every precursor award. She won the Golden Globes. She's won the New York Film Critics Circle. She's won the the Critics' Choice Award. She's won basically everything leading up to this. She's gonna win SAG. She's probably gonna win the Oscar. She's the front runner. She's well deserving. She's amazing. Uh, Emily vision. Blunt did not deserve that Oscar nomination. She didn't do jack shit in Oppenheimer. She had Besides one scene. Right, hate women. Watch Oppenheimer. Smash on! Uh, no, it's not a. It's few. not a. I hate women problem. It's a. It's a Christopher Nolan cannot write good women roles problem. That's the fucking <laughs> problem. He wrote sucks. real life. He wrote real life. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's Emily, a, Blunt, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt doesn't deserve to be there. Uh, America Ferrera doesn't deserve to be there. Divine Green Randolph can win. I hate and people. Danielle Brooks is probably the only other one who even comes close. Jody Foster Daniel again. Brooks, she's not going to win because they're racist. Daniel Brooks. It's going to be divine. She's I saw black, Color she's Purple recently. And Daniel Brooks cooked. So yeah, I say Daniel is. Brooks is my pick. But of course, you know, okay. the Academy don't want to listen to real voices to smart people. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, <smart people. laughs> the next <laughs> the next category is animated feature film. Um, we got the boys in the boys. What's it called? The boy and the heron by. Yeah. Hi, oh God! Hi, Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki and Toshio Suzuki, uh, Elemental by Peter Son and Dennis Reem, Denise Reem, my fault. Uh, Nimona by Nick Bruno, Troy Quain, Karen Ryan and Julie Zachary, Robot Dreams by Pablo Berger, Iben Iben Cormenzana, Ignasi Estape and Sandra Tapia Diaz, and then of course. The obvious winner, Spider Man <laughs> Across the Spider Verse by Kemp Powers, Justin K. Thompson, Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, and even if Amy Pascal. shaking his head, I think we all know it's probably going to win. It's Spider Man. Win the hair. Win the hair. That's the what second. What we know for sure is not going to win. It's fucking Elemental. Elemental's not winning. No one bro. watched that bullshit. And Pixar having a, it's a Pixar Disney, has it's a no Disney. juice. Pixar bro, has no off. juice. It's, it's, this, it's a Disney. It's a Disney. Like they just threw them a softball. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, Disney's a raisin. It's got no fucking juice, bro. Pixar. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, no, was Pixar it? Is, it was solid. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't think so. The winners is Boy and the Heron, Hayao Miyazaki, Studio Ghibli, you iconic. I, yes, iconic filmmaker, iconic, iconic. Stu- yeah, let me just spoil the Boy and the Heron for you real quick. Yeah, this guy hasn't look, watched it. Look, but Hayao Miyazaki <laughs> is an is. Listen to what I'm fucking saying, bitch. Hayao Miyazaki is an iconic, legendary filmmaker. Studio Ghibli is an iconic, legendary studio. This is probably his last movie he's ever going to direct. 
because yeah, he's it's, dying. He's old. Yes, it's done. It's over. Elemental's not it. Spider Verse was mid. Nimona was good, up, it's good but it's not going to win. And neither is Robot Dreams, which is a sneaky. Uh, the fact they even got nominated is is crazy. I don't even know what that shit is. It's the boy and the heron, without a doubt. That's like a lock. I guarantee you that's one. And it should win. But does that movie have Metro Booming on the soundtrack? I don't think so. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. It that's does not. True. Does it have the, Oscar you're, Isaac? You're spitting. It doesn't. You're spitting. Oscar Isaac on the on the soundtrack? Does it oh, have that Haley that Steinfeld? On the soundtrack? So on anything. <laughs> anyway. anyway uh, <laughs> let's move Spider-Man. on. Spider-Man a lock. I think okay. Spider-Man's a lock. Um, All right. Let's yes. talk about the next category. Next category all is my cinematography. <laughs> it was um, all the money you don't have, bitch. <laughs> the next, the next category camera, is man. cinematography. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't even know who's... Let's see. We got El Conde with Edward Lackman, Killers of the Flower Moon, Rodrigo Prieto, Maestro mm-hmm. with Matthew Libatique, or Libatique and Oppenheimer, Hoyt Van Hoytema. Hoyte Van Hoytema. Yeah. Hoyte Van Hoytema. <laughs> and then he the four things shot, by Robbie oh. Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, this... So no nomination for Saltburn? That's fucked up. <laughs> no. Uh, mm. El Conde is, is probably the most well-shot movie in this category. It's beautiful. It's not going to win, I don't think. It, would, it has a very slim chance of winning, even though I think it's the most beautifully shot film in this category and probably of the year. It, it's probably going to go to Rodrigo Prieto for Killers of the Flower Moon. He's an established cinematographer. He's worked with Scorsese. He's won before. I'm pretty sure he's won before. Uh, and he's just constantly nominated, and he's like, he's like a steward, like stooled, a, little, a steward of the of the of the art form. Like he's one of the most well established uh, cinematographers. Hoyte van Hoytema, Hoyte van Hoytema is also kind of is in the same category as uh, Rodrigo Prieto, and he shot Oppenheimer, which is probably going to sweep everything, and it's going to win every technical category. So, my pick. Is Hoyte van Hoytema for Oppenheimer, but I think it should be uh, Edward Lackman for uh, for uh, El Conde. I see one, two, three movies I have not seen on that list, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say Oppenheimer <laughs> only <laughs> I mean, because. Right. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I was trying choice. to go see. I was trying to go see Poor Things, um, and of course, Maestro's on Netflix, so I'll watch that probably this weekend um yeah. i was trying to go see poor things been too busy with work a conde yeah. i don't even know if that's in theaters right now still it's on I'll netflix try and watch it it's on netflix but well, i guess what yeah. we netflix we netflixing it up we binging on netflix so i'll catch that one it's so a of course killers Lorraine, with Lorraine moon. Movie. of course kills with fire moon one of my favorite actors one of my favorite, like, a couple of my favorite actors are in there. Evil Matt Damon's in it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who's Evil Matt Damon? Uh, Jesse oh Plemons. boy, Jesse Plemons. Oh, Jesse Plemons? Yeah. Evil Matt Damon. Evil That's Matt so Damon. funny. I love that Mr. he said that Mr. so many times. I just know who he's talking about. That's so funny. I'm going to change his name to Mr. What Kind of American Are You? Because that line is yeah. <laughs> so hard. He drops, That's going to get memed so hard. It's already getting memed. But, but yeah, I think... Um, I definitely think Oppenheimer. I'm not really going to elaborate because it's straightforward. Uh, moving true, on bro. to costume design. Nominees for costume design are Barbie, uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Duran, Killers of the Flower Moon with Jacqueline West. Damn, so many Jacquelines. Uh, Napoleon with Janty Yates and Dave Crossman. Oppenheimer again nope. for poor, uh, nope. with Lynn Mir- 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 Mirojnik and Poor Things, Holly Waddington. I don't think Oppenheimer That's belongs right there. in there, bro. That's just people wearing clothes. It's literally Which one? 1940. Oppenheimer, 1940. I agree. Like, and let's not... be real. Barbie doesn't either. What? What? Out of all of those fucking no, out of all of those costumes, which one's as iconic as anything in Poor Things? It should be Poor Things. Should be Poor Things. It's poor Things. It's poor it should things. be because it's, bro, I think that's the best costumes of the year. Yeah, I would say that or Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean Napoleon. 
is cool too because like the uniforms and everything it's but, a period I mean, piece and it lends exactly. itself kind of to like extravagant you know kind of costuming and stuff but that's like saying I think Les Mis should is, win. is awesome that's like literally saying like I think Les it was nominated I think it was. It probably was I think it was, <laughs> I think it was um, but it should be poor things I I I feel like they're gonna want to give it to no. I think this might be the one category Oppenheimer doesn't win. I think it's gonna be I poor things. It's either poor and killers I think of the flower moon. Killers of the flower moon, yeah. Or Napoleon. So, yep. I don't know. This is one of the categories that's kind of like up in the air. Should be poor things, and I think it's gonna win, but we'll see. Yeah, we know it should we can win, skip. but we don't know what will. Yeah. The next one, the next one I want to list is uh, directing because I know there's two choices on here that are gonna duke it. Three, cho- sorry three choices on here my fault there's at least all of them are gonna duke it out um nah, but there's three there's three that you when y'all hear y'all gonna know what i'm talking about um directing choices directing nominees are anatomy of a fall by justine triet Trier. killers of the flower mm-hmm. triet my fault i don't speak english bro. killers of the flower <laughs> moon martin scorsese the mr goat. cinema uh oppenheimer christopher nolan mr cinema jr uh poor Quite things Yorgos Lanthimos, Lanthimos. Greek, Greek God, Greek and then God. Uh, the Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer. The Glazer. I need Stavi to play him in a bio. Glaze man. The Glaze man. Um, it's. I hate to break. It's. This is Christopher Nolan's uh, Oscar. No, you know, all the way. Then no. this is. He's winning it, bro. It's like the big dog. The big dog. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not even up for discussion. He's gonna. I don't think. Do I think he should? No. Seems like I think, you think that. I think. I think Jonathan Glazer <laughs> should win, the but Glazer. he's not going to. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, Christopher Nolan again. Narr- bro, the Academy loves narratives. They love this shit. He's been doing this for how long? He's never won a directing Oscar because he's never it. deserved it. <laughs> people hey, consider Batman. people consider Oppenheimer his masterpiece. It made a billion fucking dollars. They're like he saved cinema. Crazy. Up, up it's a like billion, a, up a billion, a, dollars. A billion dollars. Yeah, it's like it's his to lose. You know, so I agree. <sighs> yeah, I, I, you know, when we we all said this when we saw Oppenheimer and we talked about it, um, a while forever ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Oppenheimer is is an Oscar movie. Every category that it applies to, I feel like it wins, save for the 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 costume part because that one's still up in the air. And best so, act- actress, and, yeah. So I think Oppenheimer's got the the director category down too. It's gonna it's more than likely gonna sweep a lot of the nominations. Notice um, notice how they didn't have a best actress, only supporting actress because Chris mm-hmm. Nolan hates women. Misogyny. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris does. Misogyny. <sighs> Um, next category, we're gonna skip some of these because I mean, there's some that, like, I'm, fuck about I'm, documentaries. Like, I wanted to say no, something real quick. Shit. I want to got? say, did Greta Gerwig deserve to be nominated for an Oscar? Fuck for off, best director. No, hmm. no, I agree. No, hmm. no. I, agree. I love Barbie, I think it's got Me a too. great message. I think it's fun. No, you know, you but know let's who be did... real, it's a, it's a Mattel commercial. Let's not fucking mince words, all right? And the Chevy no. doesn't deserve an Oscar nod. I love Greta. I love Barbie. Those five, the, there's two women. Even if you want to be like, oh, more women should be nominated, I agree. Put Celine Song on that motherfucking list. She directed the fuck out of Past Lives, and she's a first time director, and she dir- will direct Circles out. Uh, uh, she directed the fuck out of that movie, and she deserved to be on that list more than Greta Gerwig did. I'm sorry. It's, you know so it's what? Not... I'm glad got no nominations. What? Priscilla, because we fucking hate nepo babies here. You know, you know who <laughs> should have. You know who should have oh. gotten a nomination. Who should? Who I I believe should have gotten a nomination at some point or one. Oh well, not for directing. He's not directing. Oh, for directing. Yeah, for, direct, oh. for directing. Oh. Yeah. Um, and didn't Ava DuVernay get nominated, but did she win the Oscar? No, no, she didn't. That's exactly that's what I thought. Oh, so, for a wrinkle, Ava time, DuVernay, right? her magnum opus. <laughs> no, for she Selma. Selma. Ava, for Selma. Ava, love you. Selma. Stay your ass in TV. She got nominated for Selma. For that's Selma, the movie she's directing or- Origin looks pretty good. Yep, I don't with even your know. Boy, with your boy John Bernthal. Yeah, Pro Cop Bernthal. Fuck yeah, that Punisher guy. Bernthal, the Punisher. Anti Nap Bernthal. <laughs> yeah. That guy's a bitch. Anti Nap, he is a bitch. He's a bitch. Um, John, I love you. 
You're a we're going to skip we're going to skip a bunch of categories cuz a yeah, lot of all them the are technical like, and direct and documentary and so it's just too I'm many be, to go I'm through I'm going to be like, straight up with you those are categories real. I'm no not cares. paying attention to I don't know anything about nor do they I have might any not real even stay. be televised bro don't worry about I it I will I'll Probably watch them not. don't worry I'll watch them and I'll inform nerd. everybody when we when we do our full when we do our full <laughs> um our full Oscar episode we'll try and touch on it on each category as much as we can but it's going to be a long episode since it's the Oscars uh, one, mm-hmm. I'm not going to mm-hmm. stick on it. I'm just going to go bounce through it. Um, music, original score, give it to Ludwig Gorenson because that guy's the GOAT. And then uh, music, original song, they're going to give it to Dude, Rick I'm, and, just uh, I'm just Ken because that's yeah. they're going to make Ryan Gosling sing. Now, no Asteroid City, on. no <sighs> Asteroid City alien song is crazy. <laughs> Do you like that movie? That's crazy. I did like the movie. It was great. That song, best part of the movie. Fire. Agree. Get that little um, boy on stage, dude. <laughs> let's do Please. let's do uh best for writing for the adapted screenplay. There mm-hmm. are uh Oppenheimer Oppenhe- yeah, Oppenheimer there's a snub there. Barbie there's a snub there. American fiction, poor things in the zone of interest. Uh Barbie should not be on that fucking list. Oppenheimer is winning. It should be Killers of the Flower Moon. Oppenheimer is winning. It should be Killers of the Flower Moon. It should be Killers of the Flower Moon should be on that list, and it should win that fucking Oscar. Yeah, really? it's going to be Oppenheimer. Though. Adapted a toy, dog. This, we're talking about books. <laughs> then in that case, Fuck Transformers y'all. should be on some list somewhere because Transformers mm-hmm. a toy. Yeah, on the Razzies for worst yeah. fucking that on the list for about, uh, yeah, two thousand seven humanity. I like Tony McNamara, who directed, uh, who wrote the screenplay for Poor Things. He's great. Cord Jefferson, I think, did a great job with American fiction, and I think Jonathan Glazer's Zone of Interest, I think, is is too uh, the Glazer thinky, too brainy, too too transgressive for it to win yeah. anything. But too thoughtful. But for I the think dumb bucks at the Oscars. <laughs> exactly. And, I told and you, the fact not that Barbie smart got in, people. That Barbie got in and not because of the Flower Moon is fucking insane. But so that just leaves the door wide open for Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan's gonna win two Oscars at least. And, at least uh, two, if not like and, three or four. And that's a wrap. That's done. Original yep. screenplay. And then writing for uh for what's it called? No, for original screen or adaptive screenplay, that's Oppenheimer. For original screenplay, oh uh, we got Anatomy of the Fall, The Holdovers, May, Maestro, May December, and Past Lives. Did you watch I... May December? Have not seen May December, Good but ringer. I know the story. Banger. I know the story about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, on Netflix. it's, Matt, it be... it's Matt's story. <laughs> oh me, Matt's life story. Um, I think. Oh no, nah, yeah, no, nah, think... not that story. No, <laughs> I think I think best original screenplay is going to go to Celine Song for Past that guy Life. Lived my dream. Uh, that movie <laughs> is one of the best movies he said, of the year. Said, he's just like me. And it got snubbed in Best Director, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Actor. It got snubbed in too many categories. So I think the Academy is going to want to try to make up for that and give Celine no, Song. The Academy got to him. The Oscar Snipers, the Academy, the Academy, the Academy, the Academy, got Academy Strike Team. Mm. He said, I'll finish they said, uh, they said it's May, be the December. Holdovers. They're like, May, December, you may not see him until December. <laughs> got him out of there. <laughs> said, you may hold this bullet in your skull damn yeah i think Kevin Feige, i think lisa's dead they kept yeah they took they sniped them off i think it we'll should be made december to get or the holdovers either one i still haven't seen uh fucking maestro i need to get on that i'm gonna watch it but i'll I tell you what seeing... i'll tell you what maestro isn't gonna win for best makeup because that nose is ridiculous uh <laughs> the phrenology Bradley cooper's nose was fine his nose was fine i don't see why they did that they did the the wrong phrenology. It's, I see a, a category on here. Insane. Here's one that here's one that we should we should discuss. I know we're not doing the technical ones, but this one I can tell you which one's gonna win. Uh, visual effects, Gardens of the Galaxy three, one hundred percent. Gardens of the Galaxy. I don't 3. know because here's for two reasons. Godzilla minus one. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, hold on. No, it's Godzilla. No, here's dude. here's my reason. Here's my reasoning because. Because you're racist. Marvel. Because Marvel. Because they're trying to give Disney that one. Japanese that people. one. They're trying to give Disney that one. You know, here you have a, an Oscar, Oscar winner. No. That's all it's I got. It's not going to Guardians. One. I want it to. It shouldn't. 
Napoleon, and then Mission Impossible is on that list, which is wild. I forgot that movie came out this year. Oh, uh, yeah. It was all right. That was like the last movie we talked about before the strikes, and then we went on also, hiatus. We didn't touch on sound, but the fact that the creator is on here is fucking hilarious to me. The creator is on here so twice, good. bro. It's on there for the twice? sound what and it? What else? Vis- oh, visual God, effects. Visuals too. That's crazy. It's Godzilla. Yep. Godzilla's a lock, in my opinion. I see it. I see it. I see Definitely the vision. Definitely not fucking Napoleon. Are you kidding me? A movie about a that... short a short Frenchman with anger management problems? Yeah, no. Nah, get it out. Yeah, Ridley Scott needs to stop uh, making movies. That boy needs he to needs retire. To, you said he needs to Ridley stop? Ridley stop. He Ridley, needs to Ridley step stop. his ass into a grave already. Damn. Gladiator 2 is going to be ass. No, that and one's going to here cinema. to defend him. No, it cinema. doesn't need a I'll sequel. It. it doesn't I'll need a sequel. It. I don't care who's in it. Ass. That one's going to be synonym, cinema. Ah. Cinema. I'm on here making irresponsible financial decisions, bro. <laughs> I'm out here making irresponsible financial life choices. Stop. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. For our audio listeners, Matt's going to buy a fucking jersey he's not going to use. Not even just one jersey. Four. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, please let me donate to one. the Patreon. No, I'm playing. Don't. <laughs> yeah, buy us all new jerseys, please. I need a new uh, uh, one. Uh, no, nah, see, um, I think the Oscars will will really ha- be in for um a good episode here in in a couple months, couple weeks, yeah. whenever the Oscars go down. I can't wait down. to talk about it because I'm not at all uh like qualified. Uh, I don't know shit about movies. But I love talking shit, and I'm gonna be there. Bro, the, Acad- the Academy the got you, yeah. Luis, the Academy got you. I know, bro. They, they, I they, they fit right in with the voters. They didn't. Let's they didn't real. want to let me get my Celine song fucking agenda off, bro. They're trying they said, to they said, silence me. They said he started talking about May December, <laughs> and they said we may see you in December, and got you gone <laughs> real quick. Did y'all discuss Best Picture? Now we discussed Best Everything. No, we t- we <laughs> talked. Uh, we talked sound. We talked uh, visual effects. No, yeah, uh, no fucking way. Really? We did, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Why would I lie? About went... that? <laughs> what the fuck? Who'd y'all then... pick for sound? Uh, for sound, what did we pick? I don't think we even said which one should win. Oh, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be, be, gonna gonna be Godzilla. Godzilla that's minus one is this motherfucker no, that's was for, saying. Uh, that's for Guardians. visual. That's for visual. Yeah, yeah. That's what's winning visual is what I'm saying. It's gonna be Godzilla minus one. It's Godzilla. That movie looked fucking incredible. I haven't seen it, but it's got a lot of goodwill towards it. People really like Watch it, and it. Watch I need it, to. I know. Please. People so really we, like it. What are we it. talking about? Uh, best just picture? best picture. Best, Oppenheimer best picture is winning. Is There's be like ten of them, dude. I know Oppenheimer's winning. It should. And of those ten, it's going to be. It shouldn't. I agree. It should be Barbie. <laughs> no. It be Barbie. It should be past lives. Show girl power. It should Girl be May, Turner. December. I don't know why the fuck you yeah, got Yeah, May, May, December is amazing. Because it talks about actors in a bad light. What do you mean? And they make up the biggest branch in the of the Academy, the actors. I know. So. That's why I didn't get shit. Because they're like, oh, is this? It's that euphoria meme. Holy shit. Is this play, play about us? Is this fucking play about us? So <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're literally like, is this fucking movie about us? <laughs> and how... How self righteous and pretentious and fucking um, gay! How, how much self awareness we lack? Is that what this is about? But yeah, it's gonna be Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is winning. I don't think it so, should, but it will. In conclusion, massive Oppenheimer sweep across like yeah. damn near every category that it's in. in Out of the thirteen I'm Oscars, streaking, they're streaking winning the 10. Oscars, and I'm streaking. <laughs> I think our Oscar our Oscar episode is gonna Vitali be Vitali Z D T V. Or what? He's he's Vitali Z D T V, the guy who, <laughs> who streaks everyone always gets arrested. He used okay, to be so a YouTube real. prankster. Our 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 Oscar episode on, what a, uh, in March is what gonna a rise be, to grace. It's Oscar's gonna be one of our gonna be longest what? it's gonna be one of our longest episodes because if we're going through every category we need it's also to do a, a Wednesday, Twitch mind you. Stream what we're gonna Oscars. try and do, what we're gonna try and do, guys, for our audio listeners, we're trying to do our our goal this year is to start streaming. Um, we're gonna be transitioning to a new platform here in a little bit. We'll try and stream our episodes live, so y'all can hear us in the moment. Get a kind of you know, 
in studio feel, if you will, without being in the you studio. You can hear my bullshit yet. takes live and in person. <laughs> So yeah, we'll try and get the streaming stuff taken care of before the uh, the Oscars get here, so that way y'all can partake in that with us. Um, that's gonna be happening on March 10th, which is also Wednesday, which is days we typically film our episodes. So yeah, y'all be y'all be ready. Y'all gear is that when the Oscars that. are? Mm-hmm. March 10th. I think it's on Wednesday. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna call off that day if I work. Prime prime uh I'm blowing prime the restaurant debauchery. up <laughs> prime debauchery time. Debauchery I'm about, to act, about to act the fool. I'm about to give you the Oscar for Oscar for most, most behavior. Most Debaucher heinous like. statements. <laughs> Oscar for most <laughs> heinous statement. <laughs> but, yep. Goes to the Sinestro Court. <laughs> and what they would do to Sidney Sweeney's asshole. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> we're not <laughs> we're not doing I that. I do not co sign oh, this. Bet. I, I do. Co-sign I co-sign. Y'all are sick. Me, my, me, myself, and I co-sign this thing. Stop, uh, stop <laughs> harassing this woman, please. You don't Tell know her me. I said make the a better movie. Harassment of the female gender makes me sick. Tell her I said make a better movie. That's all I got. Oh, this is just in. Matthew Vaughn will direct a musical written by Damien Chazelle. This just what in. This? Damien Chazelle is a fucking hack, and so is Matthew Vaughn. I want baby. Case big closed. Matthew Vaughn. Big day for me. You talking about La La Argyle, Land Matthew Vaughn? Argyle is going to be yeah. ass. <laughs> My uh, golden circle was mid. Kingsman, oh, Matthew Vaughn. My golden goat. circle was mid. We're not. That doesn't give him any fucking uh, good faith with me. Fuck that guy. What about the first one? Kick ass, Matthew Vaughn. You talking about kick ass, Kick-ass, Matthew Vaughn? Fuck yeah. that movie. You talking yeah, about yeah. layer cake, Matthew Vaughn? My goal. Yeah, the goal. <laughs> You're talking about hold on, hold on, ball. hold on. This is my favorite Matthew Vaughn movie. You're talking about X Men First Class, Matthew Vaughn. Yeah, oh, nah. I'm back in. And then you say <laughs> Damon Chazelle, and I'm back out because fuck that guy. <laughs> La La Land's dog shit. No, it's not, bitch. Fuck you, you're a hater. I don't watch that movie. Never mind. You homophobic fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? There's no, there's like no gay people in that movie. Whoa. If, how would you know? Have you seen it? Yes. Oh, damn. what the fuck? Can't There's like no gay ass. people in that movie. It's about a straight love story that falls apart, dumb fuck. Oh, hey, brother, it's homophobic. Anyway, anyway, we love Damon Chazelle. We love to have him on the pod. Uh, <laughs> Damon, come in. Let's talk. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk, Damon. Mm-hmm. Let's Explain discuss. Explain yourself. Explain yourself. Answer for your crimes. <laughs> Answer for making me watch that movie twice. Love all mm-hmm. on in. Nerd. Well, you guys, love LA. that is a wrap for today's episode. <laughs> we appreciate y'all watching or listening to our channel. Go ahead and follow us on all platforms at Sinestro Corp. That's the Corp, C O R P, with no S. Since some, you, some vagabond freaking took that username, so I can't even use it for the accounts. We're going to find you. The <laughs> Academy <laughs> Corporation. The Beekeeper's going to find you. Next yeah, they will. Be on your ass. yeah, they will. <laughs> I'm sending a beekeeper after you. Um, so you just go ahead and follow us at Sinestro Corp. No S to stay tuned on everything we've got coming up this year. Go ahead and smash the MF like and subscribe button. Show us how much you enjoy this episode by leaving a five star review or ever listen to this podcast, or I'll send the beekeeper after you. And then send our podcast and YouTube channel to your friends, family, post in group chats, put on your message boards, Twitter, everywhere. Thank you guys, and we'll see y'all next time on. It's Nestle Core. Adios. Peace.